and the stories told with guns. Installing a legacy style barrel into one of these uppers is pretty simple. Basically, you need to be able to put the upper inside of some sort of jig that will positively hold it. The easiest way is a pin through that rear uh, hole in the receiver, and then thread your barrel in. If it starts giving you any resistance, um, go ahead and put the jig on now. This entire series is sponsored by Matrix Precision because they know how to party. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But the jig is simply just a 3D printed set of clamps that I can put a bar clamp around, and it's been designed to have the same taper as the slight taper in the barrel. So just measure your barrel, design up real quick in CAD, and print these out. Really simple and wide enough that you can get a bar clamp on there to get a real grip on it, because we're going to want to torque it into place. And just a quick reminder, if you're not working with a barrel that has already gone into the receiver, or you haven't uh, seen episode two of this series where I discuss how far a barrel needs to go prior to torquing in order to work with a receiver. Obviously, go back, watch those things, understand first. And the last thing I'll say is you need to have the bottom of the receiver facing upwards so that you can see what's going on. You can see the shelf here in the barrel. When we're done, that needs to be flat with these flat sections on the receiver. So being able to see it from this side is imperative. From there, it's just a matter of spinning it into place until it goes. And again, we're gonna watch this top section for when it's flush at the front and the flat of the barrel lip uh, is flat with the bottom of the receiver. I'll show you that in the end. Back of the workbench, you can see what I better meant by this. So this whole area here needs, it's not flat, it's not the right word, because there's actually a tiny, tiny, tiny gap between the flat section here and the flats of the receiver. But they should be parallel to one another, and that gap is minimal. That's what we're looking for. Also, obviously, we're looking for the barrel edge to actually butt up against the receiver. That's another thing we're looking for. Before we hang up our tools though, we should do another test. We should make sure that a bolt actually engages with this barrel. And it does. And we can see that the hole for the mainspring also works. Last but not least, I should mention that this took a lot of Torquing. I don't know the number because I didn't use a torque wrench because the little clamp thing that we created for this process doesn't really lend itself to that well. However, it was a lot and having the heft and weight of that uh, bar clamp was very helpful to kind of swing it into motion. It's got some momentum to it. And on top of that, because we have dissimilar metals that we're connecting here, we've got the steel of the barrel and the aluminum, in my case, of this receiver. I did use the same aeroshell grease that you use when installing a AR-15 barrel nut. That's not only going to help with reducing any risk of galling and getting stuck if you ever want to remove this, but it also is going to be a lubricating factor that helped me get it to the point where we're actually torqued it down. If you think back to episode two, where I talk about planning for a barrel install, um, when the threads are cut, the barrel's actually an eighth of a turn off of the upright. So we over torqued it an eighth of a turn to actually set it into place. So that took a little effort. Probably did some thread uh, stretching too, but that's good. That means it's gonna stay in there nice.